Hello everyone, my name is Helen spencer Oti from the Global People Team at the University of Warwick. Welcome to this webinar on internationalisation in higher education. Today's is the first in the series and we're going to be looking at understanding the process of internationalisation. So we'll be looking at questions like this. Firstly, what do we mean by internationalisation and how is it being monitored at present? How can we enhance the global fitness of staff and students and how can we check on our progress in achieving this? And then lastly, what about next steps? OK, first of all, then, let's think, what is internationalisation? So some key uh, definitions were given by Jane Knight and also Hans de Witt. And they've both talked about international or intercultural or global perspectives being um, made part of all facets of university or college life. And then more recently, including that the purpose of that is to make a contribution to society, to foster global citizenship, to foster global graduates or global staff. And that's what we at uh, Warwick have been calling global fitness. If you want to know more about global fitness and what it entails, listen to one of our other uh, webinars in the series Global Fitness for Work. So, what do we mean by international, intercultural or global? In our work, we take that to mean all forms of diversity, whether it's ethnic, religious, socio-economic or national, whatever, we're thinking of all kinds of diversity. And in terms of higher education, we're thinking of both internationalisation at home and in terms of study abroad. So let's go on to our second question then. How is internationalisation being monitored? Well, we could look at it at different levels. At the national level, there's an excellent series produced by the British Council called The Shape of Global HE, looking at different parts of the world. At an institutional level, many of you will be familiar with the rankings, institutional or university rankings given by the Times Higher Education, by QS. There's also the EAIE barometer and the sequent. A little is done at programme level. Sequent can be uh, done at the programme level. That's at uh, a degree level. And then there's the interpersonal or interactional level. The International Student Barometer, or the Student Barometer, does a little on this, just a few questions, but very few. And so uh, this is the area that we are particularly interested in. How then can we foster that global fitness at this more um, interpersonal, interactional level? It happens through the process of transformational learning. And as you can see, this is a cycle. There are unexpected, stimulating experiences. These uh, trigger the learning process or can trigger them. Reflection, we then need to reflect on those experiences so we can gain new insights. And then we need to adjust our reactions or our thinking and behaviour. So there is a dual responsibility around this. Universities need to provide those stretch opportunities that students and staff can have those unexpected or stimulating experiences. This could come through study abroad or exchange, through a diverse home community, through doing different things like volunteering or having work placements. And those are the responsibilities of the university senior management to try and arrange and put those things into place. But students and staff 
in a complementary kind of way, need to have the spirit of adventure to move out of their comfort zones and to take advantage of all those stretch opportunities. This will mean mixing and integrating with diverse others and taking advantage, as I say, of those opportunities. Perhaps key to this is the notion of integration. And this is something that the British Council pointed out in one of their reports. I'm going to read it out because it is really important. Integration of all students is an elemental factor in the expanding concept of internationalisation. Not only due to immediate student outcomes of comprehensive learning and cultural awareness, but also due to long-term benefits for the individual, the institution and the UK. So integration amongst the students is really important well, and the staff too. And in a later webinar, uh, the third one and fourth one, uh, we'll be looking at that in a lot more detail. So then, this transformational learning process is actually an ongoing one. With these um, stretch encounters, we may have an emotional reaction, feeling surprised or annoyed or whatever. We need to reflect on them and then plan and try to adjust our behaviour. We need to observe others, consult with others sometimes, reflect and experiment. And as you can see from this in this little diagram, it's an ongoing process. And in that ongoing process of uh, learning, guided support from uh, staff or others is really important, intercultural training. And this again is something that needs to um, be complemented by the university. So in other words, students and staff and um, universities all need to work together, complementing each other in helping to foster global fitness. How then can all this be monitored? Again, all have responsibility. So, organisations need to think how far are they providing the opportunities, those stretch opportunities that uh, students and staff need. Students and staff, in turn, need to think, how far are they engaging with those opportunities? And then there's the third question, then how interculturally competent are our students and staff? Just measuring one of those won't actually uh, show the whole picture. And so for us, it's important to measure all of them. And so for strategic planning, we must capture all those facets. From a strategic management point of view also, you could see it as a trajectory like this. So, perhaps very initially in the pre-internationalisation phase, co uh, campus communities were really very um, homogeneous. Now though, for the majority of universities, or many, many universities, actually the uh, students and staff are quite culturally diverse, especially in that broader meaning that we've interpreted it by. But there may be little intercultural interaction, little integration, not so much personal growth, and little actually strategic attention being paid to that by senior management. But if that learning is to take place, um, we need higher levels of intercultural interaction, we need higher levels of integration, uh, so that personal growth can be promoted, because that's what will lead to the competency internationalisation. So we've developed some tools to help monitor that process. One of these is the Global Education Profiler. It won Pioneer of the Year finalist um, last year, and it's um, it's administered by the big firm iGraduate. And there is a student version and a staff version. Then we have another tool known as the Global Mobility Profiler. And this is particularly for those that um, are going on um, study abroad or some kind of um, work placement or exchange, if it was staff, for instance. 
And again, there's a student version and an expatriate version. In the next uh, webinar, I'll be talking more about those two tools. So if you would like to find out more, do have a look at our website. You can see the address there. If you're interested in support courses, we have a, an e-course working in groups. Again, I'll talk about that a little later in the fourth webinar in this series. So do have a look at our other webinars. You can see the topics there. Or if you want to go back and see a little what Global Fitness for Work, more about Global Fitness, take a look at our webinar, Global Fitness for Work. So thank you very much. Thank you for listening. If you've got any questions, do add them to the chat window now. Meanwhile, here you can see other members of the Global People team. So do email us if you have any questions. Thanks very much.